beautiful Dalian. In today's episode, we're gonna do a little bit of exploring. So we've hired a quad bike for the day and we're gonna to go to the other side of Dalian, which is across the river. So it's gonna be a bit more of a, a cultural day if you like. So the plan is we're gonna go and hire a quad bike. So firstly, we're gonna try and get to Radar Hill. So in the previous episode, we went to Izduzu Beach and on the top you can see a big antenna so that is basically uh, radar hill so we're going to go up there because the views are meant to be excellent up there then we're going to head to the ferry boat and we're going to go across to the other side of the river it's one of the only ways you can get there the other way is to go around the big lake and that would take about probably two or three hours on the quad so we're going to go across there we're going to look at the tombs we're going to see the ancient city of kaunos then we're going to head up to Shandia, which is up in the mountains and there's meant to be a lovely restaurant there so we're going to hopefully try and get something to eat there and then if we get time this afternoon we're going to head to the mud baths so we'll see how we get on because that's not guaranteed but anyway we're going to go get the quad and then we'll get going yeah! This is the quad for the day. It's not a great start because it's uh, it's all broke. So you cannot see how much petrol or anything we've got. We said it was empty, but we're gonna go and fill that up. So we've paid 35 pound for the day. That's equivalent to 1,200 Turkish lira. So we've just paid in cash, they didn't take cards. So we're getting this just a little place past. There's a rental place called Ertash. It's just past there, it's the next one down. So yeah, they were, it was dead easy. We just went in, we're only in there five minutes. Just go in, show you driving license. They give you the contract and away you go. So we'll uh, see how we get on today. We need to go and get petrol first and then we'll be making our way to Radar Hill. Let's see how today goes. <laughs> Just up here and around the corner, I think. I mean, you can stop at the bottom, there's a little place you can park and come up. But thought the quad might have gotten up, but I don't think it's quite powerful enough. I think we're going to need to walk back I know, <laughs> Jesus. So at least Jackie's had a spinach. She had spinach last night, so that's what's getting up the hill. <laughs> right, let's get to the top. to the top eventually <laughs> it was a bit of a hairy climb you can go a little bit further up here kind of behind this antenna here but couldn't really see much all you can see is kind of the other side where the delta is so you get like a bit of a better view of the delta but what we might do is stop on the way down there was a little place there you could stop so you might get a view of the whole thing so let's show you around we've got some gun cartridges lots of poop 
probably from the animals. Uh, so this way, looking over these mountains and all these bays, if you've seen my previous episode where we took a boat trip, we came into some of these coves and swam. So I think behind this mountain here is Bacardi Bay. So this is kind of the area where we'll sail down this part of the coast here and around this cove and into there. And then this side you can probably just see is Tuzu Beach. So this is where we were in the last episode where we went to the Turtle Rehab Centre. And then you've got this long stretch of beach there. There's like a little island. But it's lovely here looking over towards the other side of the river here as well. So that's where we'll be heading next. Quite lucky today that it's really clear. So you can see for miles here, just the boats on the sea there and the sea looks really calm the day from up here. But no, it's uh, it's really peaceful, isn't it? It's really quiet. Yeah, it's so quiet. It's uh, the annoying flies. I know, there's quite a few wasps and stuff up here as well, isn't it? Worth the climb, but I think if we go a little bit further, that we might get better views because you, there is a view you can get and you've got the whole panorama. So, like I say, we can only just see the edge of the beach here. If we go back down this hill, I think you can get everything in, so the delta and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to head back down now. If we survive, um, it should take about five minutes. But yeah, it was a bit hairy coming up. When we slide. Yeah, when we slide down the hill on the stones. Right, let's get down. But this is just a little bit down the hill. You can see the antenna there in the background. So this is down looking over the lake. So this is the delta side here. So you can you can just see Dalian over there. This is the Kaunas, Kaunas side here, the other side of the river. And then this big lake, this lake now, I'm gonna pronounce it probably wrong. I think it's Koizhichek, Koizhichek. So that's a huge lake there. And if you don't get the ferry boat, you've got to basically drive all the way around here to get to the ancient ruins of Kaunas. So that's why they've got the ferry boats on so you can just jump across the river. There's no bridges across that river. So this is pretty good. Here's the lake down here that we've just driven round to get here. You can actually see the whole road from here. But yeah, it's pretty nice. Nice views from up here. So if we walk a little way around, we might get to see the beach as well as the, the delta here. better view down here. I've just set the drone, I've got a few bits of footage. Just bumped into a, a German guy who's he's camping up here. Um, he's a cyclist but he's got a flat tire. So he's just parked up here. He's got some good views, he's just got his seat pointing out over the view there, which is lovely with his book. And it's just nice and peaceful here, so it'll be lovely here at night time. But up here, I mean, well, all places we've been so far, like, there's these little flies that keep biting you. They're like tiny horse flies. And it's happened to me a couple of times now. Some just of them the, I know. I was up the top there and I just, it's, it's like a burning sensation on your leg. That's twice it's happened now. So it happened when we're walking back to our apartments the other day. And it's just happened here as well. So it's really painful actually. I mean, it's like a horse fly bite. We're going to move on, so we're going to try and get the ferry boat now across to the other side of Dalian. And we're going to go firstly to the ancient tombs. We're going to have a quick look there. We're going to head up into Chandia. Made it to the ferry boat, which it didn't take too long, probably about 20 minutes or so. But it's lovely just coming through those little pomegranate fields there. Some of the houses were beautiful weren't there? Like some of the, must be setting up for like, it's like a proper residential kind of estate. 
absolutely beautiful. But just waiting now, we might have to get another boat, although there's a car coming here off, so we won't be able to get on. Okay, so he's managed to squash what on. There's two ferry ports. This one's kind of south of Dalian, and there's another one at the north. So this one is near the Porta Cal Hotel. 50 Turkish Lira, which is what? About a pound 50 or something. Shouldn't take too long. We'll just cross the river here, yeah, then we'll, we'll get to the uh, Kaunas side. graveyard we're in here is the the Lycian king tombs of Kaunas so these date back to the 4th century they're kind of uh, like Greek style pillars and on them the gods angels and spirits so inside the chambers mark the resting place of the Lycian elite so the Lycian people were ancient people who inhabited these bays around Turkey and the tombs signify winged spirits carrying them to the afterlife. So because it's the light and elite, the most respected members of society are high up. This now forms part of the UNESCO heritage site and it's part of the ancient city of Kaunas. So it looks like there used to be a path that led up to the tombs. We've just seen it when we had a walk around that graveyard, but for whatever reason, unless anybody knows why, they've closed it off. So it's all gated up and padlocked. So we were going to have a walk up, but it doesn't look like we're going to get up there. So it looks like in there, we might have actually found the grave by total accident of Captain June. So Captain June was obviously the, the lady who set up the Turtle Rehabilitation Center. She was the English woman. I didn't realize this is where she actually would be uh, buried, so that was a little find on the way. So it was only about three, four minutes on the bike, and we've just passed Kaunos. We've seen it, so it's kind of on the way to Chandia and it's just a little bit up the hill from the tombs. So we're gonna go and have a look in here and then we'll head on to Chandia for lunch. So the existence of Kaunos has been a bit of a mystery until an English archaeologist Hoskin discovered it in 1842. 
The Swedish archaeologist P. Roos defined the independent state boundaries of Kauna, starting from the Fetier Bay at the north and the ancient city of Kaira at the north of the bay, extending till Tlos at the 35 km east of Fetier, Edima, Gokova Bay, and the west of Shamkoi, located in the west of Erla, which is a little forward north. So, in today's context, the coastal area starting from the plains of Mugla and extending up to the mountains between Mugla and Antalya was under the sovereignty of Kaunas. Kaunas has kept its borders until the 4th century BC, but then lost its status of sovereign state after the Persian invasion. It was one of the two cities residing against Persian invasion. So Kaunas was mentioned in Lycian scripts, while as Kabid in the scripts of other surrounding cities. Lifestyle and language of Kaunas people share similarities with Carian people, except five letters of the alphabet are not seen which makes the Kaunas language as unique as it is. So Kaunas itself was an important seaport city with two ports. One is in the south, which is a small castle, and an inner port at its northwest, which is called the Lake of the Leeches. The southern port was used from the foundation of the city till roughly the end of the Hellenistic era, after which it became inaccessible due to its drying out. The latter was used till the late days of Kaunas, but due to the sitting of the delta and the port, Kaunas had by then lost its important function as a trade port and started becoming poor. After Kari had been captured by Turkish tribes and the serious malaria epidemic of the 15th century, Kaunas was completely abandoned. The city was constructed on terraces, significant religious structures like Baselios, Kaunias Temple and Asalean Sanctuary. bits of rock lined up so we're not quite sure what they are but it looks like they're probably being like archaeological finds that they found around the site maybe it's from just the basilica behind we're here and whether when it's collapsed they're just bits that they're kind of just trying to piece together so there's quite a few areas like this where you've got all the rocks just lined up there's loads on the way down to the basilica if anybody knows, let me know. So I didn't actually realise the sheer scale of this place. Just thought it was going to be, when you first walk in, it's kind of like in a square, a square area of land. And we just thought that's what this was going to be. But it stretches for quite a way down the hill there, down towards the delta. And then you can turn left as well. So that's where we're going to go next. Because this is the bit I want to see, is the big amphitheater. styles back in the day and how much that cost five rocks maybe like a Roman goddess so prim and proper Cleopatra so that is the ancient city of Kaunos what do you think of that it is it's a lot bigger than I was expecting yeah, it to be massive. massive yeah it's nice it's worth a visit all Thousands of years of history hour. here, isn't it? It's like, I mean, I kind of take it all in, but it's, I mean, the views from here are lovely. We're just kind of overlooking the lake we swam in, the thermal lake the other day. So this is kind of like the big theatre here. And Jackie said she's going to put on a dance while we're down there, so you've got that to look forward to. But yeah, it's, it's quite a big site, like you say. I didn't think it would be quite as big as it is. 
And we've probably spent about an hour here now. Yeah, you just could, walking around, yeah. Again. You could probably spend a lot longer because there's like information on all the different like buildings and stuff, what they were and what they were used for. So it's it's quite interesting and it's like I say, it's something a bit different when you're yeah, taking some culture and a bit of history. A bit of history, yeah. This yeah. is probably the the wow bit, like. Yeah, the amphitheatre. I'm pleased we've actually left this bit to the last bit on the on the city because I I was thinking we're going to miss it out because I thought for a minute it was going to be up on the hill behind here, but uh, yeah, we're going to move on from here now and we're going to move up to Chandia. I think we'll try and get a spot of lunch, just a snack or something. Because what we didn't mention is I'm it's our anniversary today, <laughs> and you're hungry. <laughs> We're eating out tonight and it's now three o'clock and I think we've got a table booked for seven. <laughs> so I haven't got I haven't got much time. Introducing the irrepressible Jack Lius Caesar. <laughs> mm. Get off. Ooh. I wonder if this was the bus stop for after the Jackie's performance. That's where you sit and wait for the bus. I certainly hope they didn't pay for that performance. Right, we've stopped at a place called the Candia Terrace. I've read good things about this place if you're over here. It's a nice place to come and look over the, the delta here. And it's not too far to come. It only took about 10 minutes from the ancient city. You can walk it, but again, it would take a little while. It's quite a few steep climbs and it's really hot, so it's probably best to get a quarter or something. <laughs> just opted for an omelette and just some chips just to have between one so you say we'll be eating at seven o'clock tonight we'll try this out i mean to be fair there wasn't loads on the menu just kind of like snacks and that i think it's just somewhere nice to come and have a drink and come and sit and relax and just take in the views but the chips are lovely i've just had a one and a proper homemade chips so let's see what jackie feels about the omelette Oh yeah, they're good. They're good chips. Aren't they? They're not just an ordinary chip. Yeah. Mm, they're quite yeah. chilly, Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. Good. Good so far. That was a really nice snack. It filled the hole that was required. And uh, yeah, it was really tasty. The omelette was lovely as well, but the chips were superb, I thought. Chips are chips, but they were better than chips. The proper like homemade deep fat fryer chips, which were really good. So I can highly recommend the Candia Terras. Just drive through the village as if you've come from the ancient city of Kalnos. Just keep going and it's signposted and you'll see it. And then it's just up on the hill overlooking the bay. So an omelette, chips, two soft drinks, it was 280 lira. Like we found a mud bath <laughs> and uh, we're just going to get the ferry back because it looks like it's all shut up so all the gates are closed and everything and some guy says oh do you want to go to the mud bath he says oh yeah so he's rang someone because there's a, a sign on the gate there saying it saying the ring so we're just sat waiting here now but it looks it looks all abandoned and everything we're just saying it might be like hostel might uh, get taken in you might not see it again so yeah <laughs> I mean, it just looks like 
There's nothing here. Oh, wake the here he's just rang I think they're coming up that's twice they've rang now so we're still <laughs> here. So we'll hit right on prayer time <laughs> probably interrupted <laughs> Being let in, looks like there's some like wooden shack things over here. So we're gonna go in and see what these mud baths are like. Might have hit lucky because it might be quiet at this time. I would imagine most of the boat trips are probably done. Just looks like it's at the end of this dirt track. We'll probably spend maybe about 45 minutes here because we need to get back. The ferry's just at the back of here anyway, so it's not far to go. And then, well, our apartments are literally just from the corner from the other side of the ferry boat. So it should probably only take about 10 minutes to get back. Let's check these out. You can already tell just by this little river. And it absolutely honks. Which we knew it probably would, but my god. So we're going to go for our anniversary meal tonight smelling like absolute farts. <laughs> First pool, natural hot thermal spring, 39 degrees. If you have any kind of silver jewelry, don't forget to take off. Okay. Our second pool is mat pool. First, you go into the mat pool. Before you drink the mat pool, be careful. There is a three step, bottom is slippery. You are in the mat pool. You are covering your body with the mat. Then you are under the sun. Let it dry. When it is drying up, there is a shower over there. Yeah. Wash yourself, mat off. Then you come into the hot thermal spring. Okay. Thermal spring is 39 degrees, rich with the mineral. Maybe you can smell it is rich yes. with the silver. <laughs> when you are in the thermal, put your eyes up. Uh, yeah, put your head. Open your eyes. Close your eyes. It is good help for your eyes. Okay. And also, also, after thermal, don't take shower, keep sulfur as long as possible on your skin if it doesn't destroy you of the smelling. Yeah. <laughs> if you have any question, we are ready to serve you. Lovely. Right, so, seems a bit of a character, the old fella that uh, runs it. The first part is the mud bath. So you go in the mud bath first, cake your cell in mud, then you come out, you have your shower, then you go in the thermal bath, which is 39 degrees, and then you're meant to keep the sulfur on you for as long as possible for your skin. But he says after that, don't shower and leave it on as long as possible, so you're gonna smell like fart all day. You can smell it really bad. So it's a mud bath first anyway. Be another step. So you get the mud off the bottom of the pool <laughs> and just put it all over. <laughs> so, ooh, doesn't that feel lovely? Doesn't that feel lovely? 
Looking good! Like Shrek. <laughs> so then, once you're covered in it, you've got to get out and let it dry. Is this how you expected to spend your wedding anniversary? <laughs> Not really, covered in mud and stinging like... Fart. Fart. <laughs> Goes with the egg theme, Jay. It does, yeah. So we've had <laughs> egg bread, we've had an omelette, and now we're in sulphur. So this wedding anniversary is going to be... I don't think this is the stingy. That's the stink. Yeah. Our room's gonna smell great tonight. <laughs> you think we've been on a court bike -like rally all day, Jackie? In the dirt. <laughs> Good track race. Yeah. It? Now it's time to get this washed up, I think. Yeah, dry no, enough. Need to dry it all, yeah. guy who's washing my down <laughs> one of his bottoms is hanging out his bottoms I, could, I just oh I'm lost for words lost for words <laughs> it was very busy about for two o'clock in the afternoon okay. it was about 650 people really group from the wow. mothers yeah oh, wow. yeah and also, then. early in the morning, from 9 until 12 o'clock, group from Bodrum, from Kushadasa, from Petie, to the international company, they guessed. Right. That's busy, a busy day for you then. So that was the thermal mud baths, which was pretty good actually. Uh, the owner tried with a cup of Turkish tea there in the thermal pool. Yeah, and trying he, before a nice little I did, yeah, so he's to give a little bit of background about the place and it actually turns out lots of famous people come here, so there's yeah. been a lot of royalty here in the past. Uh, Uma Thurman, Sting, or Stink as he called him, <laughs> he probably does stink after being in there. But yeah, it's, um, it's obviously quite a popular place and it must be well known for people to come here. I think it was Princess Margaret, Princess Stephanie, yeah. the King of Spain. But yeah, obviously it gets quite light. Like, he gets a Christmas card off, um, off Sting quite a bit. Because uh, he's been here two or three times and we just tell him about him. And so no, it's been good and it's been good that we've come. It was probably about a quarter to five when we got here, so it's... Yeah, so he's had two big weeks six. today. So yeah, as we were walking in, the last boat was pretty much going out. There was about four people on a boat and they've just left. We've pretty much had the whole place to ourselves this afternoon. So it's been good. We've just been dead lucky the way things have worked out. And then, like I say, we've had that time with the owner and there's like one other person's turned up. So it's six o'clock now. We're going to have to get back. We're supposed to be going for food <laughs> at seven o'clock and we smell like... Shit. <laughs> so I don't think we're going to get out for seven. But yeah, most of the trips here are by boat. But we've been kind of lucky that we found out where to come. And it was just a stroke of luck. The two Turkish guys on the bridge at the harbour for the yeah, must have seen ferry that, yeah. scene. Were, um, must have seen we pulling in. And then they've just said, oh yeah, go back and I'll ring and get somebody to let you in. So we're just at the, at the ferry waiting for it now. See it across the river. It's only tiny bit really so it's probably only going to take about a minute to get across there but it's literally once you come out that way if you come by bike you come out you turn right and it's literally it's probably not even a minute away 
Um, so yeah, we're just waiting for this ferry to come back across and then we'll be on my way back. So that is the other side of Dalian, which we would highly recommend. And it's very easy to get to on the ferry boat, which is cheap enough to do. So if you fancy a change of scenery, get yourself across there. There's plenty to see and do. You can take in some of the culture and some of the history. And of course, you've got the mud baths, which were just a great experience. And our tip for this would be, if you're gonna to go to the mud baths and you wanna get away from the crowds, maybe visit after five o'clock. Again, you can go across on the boat or you can hire a private boat, which would probably take you across. And I believe the mud baths close about half seven, eight o'clock at night. So it is worth doing later on. So that wraps up this episode. So if you've enjoyed the video and found it useful, give it that thumbs up and don't forget to comment, share, and most importantly, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And we'll see you in the next episode. And we are gonna eat in Vienna's place. Tonight we are eating at Caretta Caretta. Good. Right, this time round we're going to try Allegria Brasserie.